Today we are talking about specialty sets. Now specialty sets are your Paldean Fates, your Crown Zenith, your upcoming Prismatic Evolutions, and we're going to talk about a mystery set that's getting a little bit of traction, kind of a really, really slept on, kind of regarded as a crappy set as well in this video. But we're going to start off with, this is the Bubble Mew. It obviously just popped off recently, ran up to 170, it cooled off for a little bit, and now it looks like it might be running again, possibly. We'll have to track that, see where it ends up. But we're seeing last solds at 180, 178, 178, 180 for the Bubble Mew. It's a super adorable card. I like the all the Pokemon in the background. Uh, it's do doing really well. And it just got me thinking about specialty sets. Paldean Fates, if you haven't opened it, is a super fun set. They're usually all fun to open. Crown Zenith, usually there's a lot of hits. It's very fun. And they don't always do the best investment-wise because there's usually only ETBs. But I feel like with the Pokemon Center ETBs, the tides are changing, things are shifting around, and this card grew 87% in the past month alone. You can see the chart right here. It, it's pretty much slowly climbing again. So it'll be interesting to see where this card ends up at. Now, another card from this set, I started taking a deeper dive at this set and a few others. Sometimes the lesser cards that you don't always check out, sometimes they have bigger gains than you realize. And following the Bubble Mew, you got the Shiny Mew that is up 35%. In the past three months it went from a low of seven dollars up to around 10 10 or 11. the one month chart shows only five percent of growth so it looks like it might be cooling off a little bit for that but that's those are some pretty good gains we'll zoom out to the one year at pre-release this was a 13 dollar card and its low was six dollars and 30 cents so it's just nice to take a look at maybe you have this card in your collection maybe you didn't realize it had gone up in value there is a high sale here a 17 dollar sale that was November 10th, so interesting there. Now we've talked about this card, the Charizard. We knew that when the Bubble Mew popped off that the Charizard possibly would follow. 151 Zard doing things, right? Now this card is up 26% in the past three months with 38% growth in the past month alone. We zoom out to the one year pre-release highs, or pre-release was actually 160 and then it shot up to 180. Its low was about 100 bucks. And last solds we're seeing 140, 150, 140. So we'll see where this one ends up. I have a feeling this one's going to fall off. I'd like to see this one climb a little bit because I do think that this is a very cool card, a cool version of Charizard, but just another one to keep an eye on. Next up, we have Pokemon Center ETB. So this is what I've been talking about. So Paldean Fates, it's always been a fun set. I think it was well-received upon release, right? But value-wise, it just really wasn't there for a long time. And that kind of happens with a lot of sets in general. You just see, they, they're just doing okay. They're just doing their thing. People like them enough. But then once the the value starts to, the singles start to rise, the boxes start to rise, people are like, oh, I, you know, and they're all about it. Everyone, everyone jumps about it once there's money involved. And this might be one of those sets. It's still early-ish on, but the Bubble Mew is bringing a lot of attention. Gains, though, we're seeing 18% gain in the past month alone on the Pokemon Center ETB. So this has the Mimikyu stamped promo with the Pokemon Center stamp. That's usually what makes these boxes the most valuable is the stamped promo. It's a limited edition. They don't usually reprint them, right? 18% gain in the past month is very good. 20% up on the past three months. Looks like it hit its low right here around 67, and now it's up around 82. However, last holds are higher than that. We're seeing 89, 80, 80, 90, 90. So it looks like this is, a, if you wanna say this is a $90 box, that's even more percentage gains there. Upon release, Obviously, pre-release numbers are always high. This is, this is especially with Pokemon Center ETBs. They go for 150. This one shot up to 160, and then it was readily available in the $70 range for a long time. So it's finally starting to move. Uh, nice to see that box moving as well. Now, this is the regular ETB. Now, this is kind of what surprised me. Not that it would be up, but that it would be up 25%. On the three-month chart, 25% up. It was 40 bu 41 bucks, and now it's... Pretty much 55, 54, 16% in the past month alone. Zoom out to the one year. Pre-release numbers pretty high in the 60s. Looks like it's low was $35. And now they're up to 50. So that's pretty good gains there. Last sold 55, 60, 55 for the regular ETB. So no stamp promo in there. Usually people just buy these to rip the product because there's no booster boxes for these sets. So they usually print a lot of regular ETBs. Next up, we have another single from the set. We I've talked about this recently. This is the Gardevoir. I think that this card is stunning, and I think the Popo, the Popo, the Popomon, 
excuse me, the Pokemon is popular enough to do good things. I still think that there's some room on this card, but it has had some big growth. 22% in the past month alone, it went from $38 card up to a 47. The three month chart is actually down though. So this card was declining and this was the bottom and it's bouncing back up off that. On the one year pre-release was high, 68. And yeah, so that was the one year low, the all time low. It was in the 30s, last solds, around 50 bucks. Two at 50 and then you got some 45s, but you got a high 57 here. This is another one to keep an eye on. I do think that this card will do well. I think that PSA 10 versions of this card will do well in the future. It's just an underrated card, right? Third third most valuable in the set. Then we have booster bundles. Booster bundles, these were everywhere. I remember, was it, was it last year? I remember seeing sales of these. Maybe it was Prime Day. Uh, let me know if you guys remember in the comments. These were selling, it was like a buy three, get one free for Prime Day. And these were one of the items. Uh, these were pretty cheap for a while. We'll, you'll see that when we look at the one month chart or the one year chart. 21% growth though in the past month alone. The three month shows 23% and then we'll zoom out to the one year here. So you could have had these for below MSRP, $24, 25. They did have a spike right here. I don't know if this was, a, this must've been from this like buyout right here. Somebody bought a bunch of them, sent the price up, but they've been uh, at or below MSRP for a while. Last solds though are even higher than what we're seeing here. 40, 40, 44, and 32. Uh, there's 244 listed on TCG player. Uh, I do like ripping for specialty sets. I feel like booster bundles are underrated for product to, I like the booster bundle displays, but also just the booster bundles to rip. I've traditionally had really good luck with booster bundles better than ETBs for sure. So it's kind of a product that I like. Next up we have a tin. I think we've talked about this kind of, uh, I don't know if it was this one or the other one. There's two versions of this tin. I think there's an international one and a US version. But uh, just decent growth, 13%. It's nothing crazy, but 7% in the past month. I just threw it in here because I do think it's relevant. Because of all the tins, I think that this tin is very attractive with the promo card. I think the promo card is decent. And I think that these will probably do well in the future. Pre-release prices were 50, came down to 40, came back up to 50. And looks like a low of 35 on these guys. Uh, I remember picking these up at my local Target. I think I ripped a few. I think I ripped it on the channel. There should be a video there if you guys want to check this out. Okay, now Paldean Fates, underrated card. And uh, Before I go too far, we have two more sets we're going to take a quick look at. So the next set is going to surprise you guys. So don't don't uh, don't tune out yet. Uh, but gold in, what is this, like teal? Gold Maridon. Not not crazy gains, but I just wanted to touch 10%. This card's up 10% from the, from the set. I noticed that this was like higher up in the list. And so I clicked on it as low as 10 and now it's coming off of that a little bit. It was at almost 12, but now it's like 11. 5% in the past month. Uh, the one year chart obviously pre-release was high, 16. And yeah, so it's finally coming up again. I feel like a lot of these cards, the gold cards, these one, these other gold cards, kind of undervalued because they can be very difficult to pull just in general. So, I mean, it's nice to see one of these cards on the list, right? Uh, last solds, might be coming down 950 920 but then before that you have a 14 11 10 and 10 so uh not the most popular card but it did have a little bit of gains now this set this next set might surprise you guys check this out pokemon go so this is the pokemon go pokemon center elite trainer box plus they called it i don't know why they called it that and just hear me out we're just gonna take a look at a few things only five percent up on the past three months but they have market price at 58 last sold 65 65 and then there's a 50 60 58 65 64. i know that this is an underrated set well maybe not underrated it's kind of pooped on and i understand why it's not particularly very good but for me pokemon go is one of those things that brought me back to pokemon in 2016 and it's just nice to see it get a little bit of movement four percent in the past month we'll zoom out to the one year and you could see that this was $65 before and it looks like this was its one year low so it's just nice to see it get a little bit of movement at some point this set probably will go up a little bit more in value I know it's not particularly very good but it's just nice to see even a single from this set so this is the Mewtwo uh, rainbow 18% gain now that's pretty good on the three month chart one month shows it 13% up so this is currently they have market price at $33 it was 34 before, so you could have bought this at 28. 
had a decent flip at 33. Dollar wise, not the best, but percentage wise, pretty good. Last solds are kind of all over the place 26, 30, 28, 33. Uh, so Pokemon Go made the list. There's one more card from the set, uh, the Dragonite Rainbow. Now this card's up 18%. It's around $25. They have the market at currently 18% in the past month, 10% in the three month chart, and 22%. It's actually up on the year. Could have had this as low as $17 was its low. However, the last one of the last solds was 18, 19, 30, 19, 20, 33. So sales really all over the place on this card. Uh, but just an, like a set that nobody really talks about anymore, I feel. Um, so I just I wanted to throw it in here. But we got just a few from the last set, which is not really a surprise, Crown Zenith. So these are the regular ETBs. Just the regular ones, right? Up 20% in the past three months. This is cracking $61. That's pretty decent with 14% gain in the past month alone. The one-year chart's looking super solid. Now this set has been heavily printed into the ground. Like they just keep releasing product with this. It's honestly astonishing. But you could have had this at a low, 38, and now it's $61. So it's been a slow burn for Crown Zenith, but very consistent sales, 60, all 61s right here. I'll call it 62s. So Crown Zenith looking really good. Then we have the Sleepy Mew. Underrated card from the set. I know I know a lot of these are easy to pull, but these gains you kind of can't really ignore. 36% gain. Once again, percentage gain, not a dollar gain. And this, you could have had it for $5, and now it's 760 and potentially on the way up. 30% in the past month alone. I mean, that's pretty solid. The one year will give us a little bit better. Like, it kind of just traded in this channel, went from like six to four for a while, six, four, six, four. And now it's up around seven. Although last sold, we're seeing five. 8, 12, 7, 12. So uh, personally, I like to see this at around a $10 card. I do think it's worth it. I think it's super adorable. Um, but, you know, I don't get to decide the market. But that is going to do it for this one, guys. I just wanted to touch on, I wanted to talk about specialty sets. I think Prismatic is going to obviously change everything, everything about uh, about specialty sets crown zenith i feel like if it wasn't printed as heavily it i mean i think crown zenith is an amazing set it's just the cards are just too common the boxes are still widely available those sam's sea and sky boxes were just everywhere um but yeah this was about specialty sets um singles and seal that are moving and that's pretty much it if you guys are this far in the video and you're not already subscribed do yourself a favor do me a favor Go down below, hit the subscribe button, and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think, if there's anything shocking on this list. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.